All right, I want to go over the Atlantic Division on their trades this this past trade a couple weeks, to say the least. Uh, so we're going to go over the list real quick. Let's just jump over the list. You can kind of see we're going to go from top to bottom uh, in the standings right now. So you can see right now we have uh, Boston, Toronto, Tampa, Buffalo, Ottawa, Florida, Detroit, Montreal. And this is the Saturday after the trade deadline. So we're going to go through those. Let's start off with Boston. Boston, I did a video on this earlier too. Uh, we have Dmitry Orlov and Gar Garnett Hathaway coming from the Capitals. Uh, in exchange, as you can see, we had Minnesota being uh, a middle partner for that. So I'm going to go over. So we had, uh, let's go with Orloff, right? Orloff started with the Capitals uh, and he got went to Minnesota, had half of his salary retained. You can see the 2.55 million. And then they retained half of that in exchange, well, for exchange, for holding on to half of that. Uh, salary you had boston to get in the fifth round or giving minnesota wild getting boston's fifth round pick and so they have dimitri Orlov coming in a nice cheap deal they also picked up garnett hathaway and from the capitals as well and it looks like they had a uh, uh andreas svetlikov signing rights so i think that they came from uh washington as well but or from minnesota it looks like any, either way, um, the signing rights don't either. He signing rights are not worth anything. It's just having them on their um, their I a team's allowed to have 90 people in their system, right? You know, so you, that includes ELCs, AHL, NHL team. And so this is just a signing rights that got moved, probably just moving someone off the 90-person um, uh, roster, I'd say, the 90-person um, pool of talent you have. So uh, Minnesota, like I said, gets a fifth-round pick out of this. Boston gets a pretty good haul, to say the least. Uh, the Craig Smith is more of a cap dump. They get the first round pick, a third round pick, and a second round pick. You, this is the way I see it. You get the first round pick for Dimitri Orloff. You get the second round pick for Gar Garnett Hathaway. And you get the, the third round pick for holding on to Craig Smith cap, uh, cap hit. So, um, and that kind of works out. Money-wise, you can see uh, Boston actually made a little bit of money off this too. So good for them on that. Um, we got a little small AHL change. Here we go. Shane Bowers. Uh, and Keith Kincaid, Colorado shores up there. Uh, Keith Kincaid is a, a goalie, so they can show up their uh, depth goalie. And they, I don't know what, I honestly don't know what Shane Bowers does. So, um, But Boston's final biggest trade they had was picking up Tyler Bertuzzi from Detroit Red Wings. Detroit Red Wings did retain half on that. They did get a first round pick and a fourth round pick from Boston on this. It actually was uh, rumored that Carolina was also in hunt for Bertuzzi. Um, they were actually going off some pretty big names. They were going after Timo Meyer, which they actually offered six picks for to New Jersey to San Jose, but uh, San, Jose, San Jose ended up going to New Jersey or with New Jersey. And then they were also after Tyler Bertuzzi, but uh, Boston's gave up a bigger haul, which is so they just got outbid. So bummer for Carolina. So let's jump over the Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, I actually want to mention the Dryden Hunt and Dennis Mogan trade just because of Dennis, the Dryden Hunt will be come back into play um, just in a little bit. So this has actually happened pre, this is really early in the season, right? And, the, and you can see this in the next section. We'll move on to the next trade for the Ryan O'Reilly trade, which was huge, right? So we had uh, something similar, a three-way trade, kind of like we just saw with Boston. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly came from the St. Louis Blue, but went through um, the Minnesota Wild. So you had uh, St. Louis sending Ryan O'Reilly, them retaining half uh, for a fourth-round pick, and Ryan O'Reilly then, then moving to the Maple Leafs. Along with Josh Pilar coming, uh, they Josh Pilar was a prospect from the Minnesota Wild. So they also just picked up Noel Chari just straight up uh, from the St. Louis Blues. Um, in exchange, the St. Louis Blues are getting uh, Adam Gaudet, a nice, a good AHL, and he might actually get some time up in St. Louis just because of how many players they lost. Um, Mikhail Abramov is a prospect AHLer, um, getting a first, second, and a third. That is not bad at all. Again, kind of similar what to the, actually that's a similar. Um, Output, I'd say. So you can see this is kind of like what Orloff and Hathaway, or Hathaway who did for Boston. They gave up a first, second, and third. Um, you can see they also gave up first, second, or third, right? Ryan O'Reilly being the big piece, the first round pick right there. Um, the Noel Chari being the second round pick, and the third round pick is just to hold on to these uh, contracts and everything. So, anyways, moving on to the other, the other major trade that Toronto made for uh, Jake McCabe and Sam Lafferty, and the the bonus of getting Jake McCabe and Sam Laff Sam Lafferty. So there's two parts. One is that uh, Toronto did not have to give up a roster, any roster players for this. None of their top prospects either. Uh, kind of more B. 
C, B level prospects to say the least. Um, and uh, they actually got a couple of picks back. And the other bonus is that you get Sam Lafferty for not only the rest of this year, but the year after. And Jake McKay for two years after that, 50% retained, which is very, very nice. So um, going back over to the Chicago Blackhawks, Joey Anderson, again, um, he, he played a little bit for the Toronto Maple Leafs, but wasn't going to make a, a big move or anything with all the big moves they ended up making. Uh, Joey Anderson was just not going to have a spot on the team. Um, Pavel, Pavel Gogolev, um, he is a HLR prospect, so hopefully he gets some time in Chicago eventually. First round draft pick, 2025, and it is top 10 protected, which is nice, along with a second round in 2026. I mean, 2026 is so far out. That's, that's four drafts away, right? 23, 24, 25, 26, so it is... They don't even care about it. It's it's so far out. And besides, Toronto's one is right now, similar to Boston. Um, this is actually a really surprising trade. Uh, it, it does make sense though when you think about it, because um, with the amount of uh, high offensive defensemen that the Toronto Maple Leafs have, they Rasmus Sandin was fighting. He was doing a great job in the third line, um, but really he's not a third line person. He's you know he has a high off high offensive upside um, for a defenseman. And so uh, Toronto getting getting something for Rasmus Sandin in that first round draft pick is impressive um, because that's leverage they can use at the draft later this year to either move up or move down um, if they want to. You know, he, you know, we've seen that uh, Kyle Gibbs has taken these first round picks and or traded them for two sh second round picks before. Um, Eric Gustafson just shores up that defense. I heard there was calls on Eric, for Eric Gustafson. I'm surprised they didn't trade him just because how much depth they have on defense. But you know, Kyle Gibbs is in the last year's contract, so. He's looking to just, you know, go all out. So, so again, ho good luck to Rasmus Sandin. Um, this is a small pick. You had Pierre Engvall being traded for a third-round pick to the New York Islanders. I mean, good, good player. Um, but, uh, he, again, kind of similar. He, he was – there's too much depth. He was going to continue to get pushed down. And, just, and they, they're in their win-now era, right? Um, and then, of course, look at they, they, they traded him for a third-round pick. And then uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs traded that, uh, a third-round pick. So for Luke Shen, so essentially they just traded Pierre Engvall for Luke Shen, just different teams. So good. By the way, great thing about Luke Shen is that he was was drafted by the uh, Toronto. I mean, several years ago. So now he's back. I think he has the third longest uh, gap between two two different tenures with the Leafs, uh, which is impressive. So, and again, we, like we talked about Dryden Hunt, Dryden Hunt, who they did end up trading with the uh, Colorado Avalanche. So they ended up just trading for Razim. Uh, Redeem Zahorna, so small AHL trade, nothing too crazy. Uh, moving over to Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, they only made two moves, really, that are uh, one pretty significant. I'll be honest, it's probably the biggest um, biggest move that I've seen with the trade, how many assets they gave away. Again, the biggest trade of the, in my opinion, the deadline because of how many assets they ended up giving up in Julian Breeswell. I did end up going over this trade at one point, so if you want to check out that video as well. Um, Janner Janot going from the, the New Jersey the Nashville Predators to the Lightning for a first, second, third, fourth, and fifth round pick, all different various years. Of course, the first round pick is top 10 protected, as well as Cal Foot. Cal Foot, which is not working out as well as they would like to get in their, in their win now era. He might work out. He's a late first round draft pick. So he might work out, but honestly, in Tampa Bay, with this core, they want to win now. So picks mean n not nearly as much as they do. And honestly, it's crazy. And Tampa Bay does, actually doesn't have a first-round pick until 2026. Again, similar to uh, a first-round pick until 2026, which is amazing. They, I think they have two sevens this, this up-and-coming draft, which is wild. Um, and then just straight up, uh, this to me, this is an odd move, I think. Um, but I think uh, Tampa Bay didn't want a pick, right? They wanted Michael and Nisimov, and they, they, they were probably no good pick that uh, the T San Jose Sharks wanted in this case. Um, so they ended up picking up Val Vladisov, Nemestikov, and so they actually ended up trading him. So I'll be going over that trade when I go over the um, Pacific Division. Let's go over to the Sabres. Um, Sabres are here making a small trade. AHL or uh, more of a prospect, Josh Bloom, uh, for the Canucks. And then Buffalo Sabres getting Riley Stillman. Just a small little trade. And a similar trade here. Uh, they uh, Sabres signed Eric Portillo and then moved over and then traded him over for a third-round pick. So, uh, or I guess they did it before that then. No problem. Um, small one. Sabres and Andrews Bjork over. Again, Buffalo really standing pat in this in this uh, draft um, or this uh, trade deadline just because they're in that they have a lot of their young prospects they're, they're just developing so they're no big trades and um, you can see a small AHL trade Austin Strand for Chase Crispy 
Prisky? Oh, yeah, Prisky, never mind. Um, and then I'm just going to knock out this one, like Erasmus Asplund for a seventh round pick, small trade, like I said. Uh, but this one's the one that I think is working out for both parties. Um, Jordan Greenway has kind of um, fallen out of favor with the Minnesota Wild and just their position and everything. And this ends up being a good uh, piece. For, I think he's will play in the, bot, the bottom. He's a forward, I believe. Um, he'll be playing with the Buffalo. So this is a good pickup because the second round pick is, is always valuable. Minnesota Wild doing this weird buying and selling. They are doing. They did a phenomenal job, in my opinion, for their position and what they had with those buyouts for Parise and Suter. So, again, a second-round pick and a fourth-round draft pick. So, again, they got something out of Jordan Greenway, again, who's fallen out of favor. So, Ottawa. Ottawa making one of the bigger moves. Let's start with the smaller one real quick. I'm just trading Tyler Mott for um, Julian Gauthier. Uh, Tyler Mott played for the New York Rangers last year in last year's playoffs, so they're very familiar with him, which is nice. Um, and, of course, if the New York Rangers advance to the second round um, in this, it moves up from to a 2026, uh, or sorry, a sixth-round draft pick instead of a seventh, so a little extra. Um, Senators looking to move the, off their Nikita Zaitsev contract. They did talk, there was talk about actually trading um, the Zaitsev pick with, with the first round pick. Um, so the fact that they'd have to do that, which is really beneficial for the senders, um, just setting over Nikita Zaitsev's contract along with a second round and a fourth round. I'm pretty sure he actually has one more year left on this too. So really it's Ottawa not only freeing up the rest of the money this year, but also next year as well. So the other massive one that we talked about, Jacob Trickern, who's, who was sitting out for, I think like nine games. It was, it was a couple weeks, you know, previously was going to be traded to LA. I thought it was going to be LA, honestly, in my opinion. But what ended up happening is that, the Arizona Coyotes ended up um, calling out, not, not not calling a bluff or anything. What they did is they put out a tweet that says, "Hey, we're sitting we're sitting Jacob Chicken for trade related reasons," and that made the market go crazy because everyone started calling him and saying, "Oh my God, he's going to be traded soon. Maybe I can get in on this." And, and LA was not happy with that move. Uh, they're doing that, so they actually pulled their deal uh, and ca- ca- caused a little bit of tension. And in my opinion, the Coyotes didn't get as much as they could have for Jacob Chicken. We know that they were asking for three first rounders, and in this case, they were going to get. And really, how it's going to work out with conditions and everything, um, they're really only going to get two for two second rounders and a first. So you can see this first rounder right here is top five protected. Makes sense if it, it if it, but I don't think that maybe Ottawa will get there. I don't think they'll get the top one of the top five picks, but it, it will get moved to the following year, twenty twenty four first round pick. And then same with this one, if Ottawa makes the Eastern Conference Finals and the the twenty twenty four first round pick is top, and the the time becomes. T- the 2024 first round pick becomes top 10 protected. If the pick is, is top 10, becomes a 2025th. Either way, what's going to happen is this second round pick is just going to stay a second round pick. I mean, they're not making it to the finals or the uh, conference finals to me. Another small pick to the Philadelphia Flyers. One of the very few f- moves that the Flyers did end up making. Uh, Patrick Brown for a sixth round pick. So nothing crazy. Um, but again, Ottawa is a little bit, is trying to move towards that playoff push. So good for them making this small trade. Florida Panthers did nothing. And this is a huge flop, in my opinion, in F. Honestly, the pro- the problem was they didn't have any cap space. They didn't have any really any assets to trade. So they really couldn't do anything there. This is a huge flop, and I'd be really interested to hear their press conference because I, I haven't heard anything yet, but I'm sure they're going to be having a press conference later today. So, Oh, the Red Wings. I'm wearing their jersey right now. Um, let's just, we'll go back real quick. Um, to the uh, some, one of the more surprising trades was Philip Hronik being moved. Philip Hronik, a great defenseman, and he is actually locked up for not only the rest of this year, so he's not a UFA, he's actually an RFA, and he's locked up for next year as well. So this is what Vancouver was talking about, making a move like this because they wanted to acquire young talent, um, people that needed a second chance or a bigger role. And Philip Hronik really stepped into his stepped into the role this year. I think he had 37 points and in 50 some games and so he really stepped up in his role and we, i was really surprised i think what ended up happening with the detroit red wings and vancouver canucks is vancouver actually reached out to the red wings which ended up giving the red wings a lot more leverage in this case being able to get a first round and a second round for him i Eisman did say he was not shopping around the philip Peronic, but again it ended up working out really well for them getting that first and the second round pick very surprising so uh, actually the red wings are playing the islanders today so i'm i'm tra- i'm i'm rooting for uh, an Islanders win because I want I want a little higher draft pick. So um, the condition on this pick, by the way, is that it is top 12 protected. So for the Islanders. Again, we talked about the Bertuzzi trade. Great, great trade. Um, again, getting getting um, the Red Wings getting assets or getting picks out of this because he is a UFA. He was not planning on signing. There was some talks back in December, but those did not end up going anywhere. 
Again, top 10 protected. So good for the Red Wings in this case. So we have uh, Red Wings also trading uh, out Verona. Let's see, they're not trading uh, in, in, a, in a good way, I'd say. But Jacob Verona being um, moved to the St. Louis Blues, essentially being a capped up because he has um, he has the rest of this year as well as next year as on a contract. Um, Red Wings just getting something out of nothing because I think the plan was to buy him out next year. So they did save a little bit of money, plus get an asset out of it being the seventh round draft pick. And Dylan McLaughlin, just an AHL that ends, ends that expires at the end of the year. So, again, not a big move, um, nothing crazy. I really hope the best for Jacob Rana. I did have a theory that um, that the Red Wings were going to be getting JVR, so James Van Reems, like, but the problem was being that they can only hold on to three or three. Uh, three salaries retain on three salaries three player salaries and so since they had to retain on jacob brown this is the reason that uh detroit did not act as a third-party broker for a james van van reams like trade so there we go uh oscar sunquist plays really well he's been playing on the power play and the penalty kill right he's getting a fourth round pick out of this this is nice this is a nice little trade again ufa probably not going to be signing for the signing for the next year so this is a good just extra pickup for the detroit red wings so good for them Moving over to the Montreal Canadiens, our last team of the trade uh, deadline. Again, didn't do many, didn't do many moves. Um, one of the bigger moves being moving of Evgeny Dodonov, who they ended up picking up from uh, Vegas. Uh, they ended up trading uh, Evgeny Dodonov, like an older player, fifty percent retained for Denis Gurionov. Um, and the cool thing about Denis Gurionov is he's a lot younger player. Again, kind of fell out of favor with the uh, Dallas Stars, so this ends up allowing them to be able to mold this player and get a young young player so that they can work with him and he can start being built and be part of the core la kings and then montreal canadian just trading at ahl players not a big not a crazy trade here um this was one of the more i guess it was this this right here the banana trade this is ended up being more complicated but um ended up being not like nothing of consequence to say the least um so we have san jose had nick bonino and sent nick bonino to or well, sorry let me phrase San Jose Sharks sent over Nick Benino to the Canadians. Canadians ended up retaining half the sal- salary um, of Benino. And now, and then the Penguins ended up picking up uh, Nick Benino for the year. So, from Montreal, getting the signing rights here. Tony Sutton getting the signing rights here. And because they are retaining, they get the fifth round pick. And then uh, back from the San Jose Sharks, they get a fifth round pick and a seventh round pick on this. So, again, more complicated three-way deal, pretty inconsequential in my opinion. Uh, and of course, the problem being that the Pittsburgh Penguins are just staying old still. Um, not really just trying to stay with this older core, not doing any sort of retail rebuild in which Montreal or Washington is doing, which I'm very much in favor of. But we'll go over that in the next video. So there we go. That's just got the trade, the trade docs for the uh Atlantic Division of the Eastern Conference. So let me know what your thoughts are. Do you have a favorite team in this? Do you have uh, what do you like? What do you not like? Again, I'm I'm pretty in favor of a lot of the Red Wings moves. I thought it was really impressive, and I thought that they did really well. The only one I, I complained about was Jacob Verana, but I understand what Steve Eisen was trying to do. So let me know what your thoughts are. Anyways, hit like, subscribe, and uh, love you.